15 track album, these are the delusional announcements for Sunday, November 13, 2022. Please keep these families in prayer. In loving memory of Sharon Bradley, mother to Sharon Bradley, funeral services were held on November 12, 2022 at East Lawn Elk Grove. In loving memory of Leslie Mickerson, mother to Patricia Wade, mother-in-law to Richard Wade Sr. Funeral services will be held Thursday, December 8, 2022 at 11 a.m. at St. Paul Baptist Church. In loving memory of Frank Randall, brother to Magdalene Love, funeral services were held on November 12, 2022 in Richton, Mississippi. Thank you. The Howard family would like to sincerely thank everyone for their prayers, words of comfort and encouragement, cards, hugs, meals, and tokens of love during this very difficult time. We are grateful to God for you. Your kindness won't soon be forgotten. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. St. Paul family, in the event of an illness or death, please contact the church office at 916-737-7070. Welcome to the virtual service at St. Paul Baptist Church, located in Sacramento, California. Listen, let me speak to the OGs in the house for a moment. Listen, we got to stop acting like we ain't never made any mistakes. I wish somebody would help me. We got to be truthful and honest and transparent. We need your help collecting donations for the Thanksgiving food box giveaway. Visit stpaulsack.org forward slash give. Text give to 916-579-7280. Attention 2022 Thanksgiving food giveaway. Sponsor a box. We are seeking two boxes of stuffing, one can of cranberry sauce, two gravy packages, three boxes of mac and cheese, two cans of green beans, two boxes of cornbread or rolls, and fresh yams or three cans of yams. Completed boxes can be dropped off at the church November 15th or November 16th between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Update your member information needed by all members. To update your information, send a text message for a link to 833-447-0099 with the message update. Type the word update and send. Click the link receive to fill out the form. Or you can fill the form out online at www.stpaulsac.org forward slash update. St. Paul family, here's the November happenings at St. Paul. This Tuesday, November 15th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., collecting Thanksgiving food donations. This Wednesday, the 16th of November, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., collecting Thanksgiving food donations. And at 12 p.m., Word on Wednesday, Bible study, in person and online. This Thursday, November 17th, 6 p.m., Oak Park Peace Walk. We will be meeting at the FLC. This Friday, November 18th, at 9 a.m., will be COVID-19 testing. 10 a.m. COVID-19 vaccines. Also at 10 a.m. Community food box giveaway. There is no RSVP required. This Saturday, November 19th, will be the Thanksgiving food box giveaway. RSVP required. Sundays, Sunday school at 9 a.m. for children, youth, and adults. Sunday worship service at 10 a.m. in person and online. Also happening in November, November 24th, Thanksgiving service at 10 a.m. The 21st through the 25th, the church office will be closed. November 29th, free Zumba class in the FLC. For more information, visit the attend section of our website at www.stpaulsac.org. St. Paul's Victory Magazine, Harvest Edition, is now available for viewing. Visit our website at www.stpaulsack.org. And don't forget to stay connected. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up and share this message to encourage someone this week. St. Paul family, that does it for your morning news. Thank you for worshiping with us.
that you are a good God and you're faithful. And so we worship you, Jesus, in this place. We want to bow before you, God, and we want to empty out everything that is in us. God, we want to pour out our worship to you, God. We want to give it all to you, God. Say this together. Bow down. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. Bow down. Bow down and worship. Enter in. Oh, enter in. Oh, enter in. Can y'all help us say that? Bow down. Bow down and worship him. God, you alone are worthy. Worship him. Oh, worship. 
worship Him. Oh, worship Him. We worship the only true God. Bow down and worship The one that deserves him. our praise. In we give Him all the glory and the honor. Oh, enter in. Oh, enter in. Come on, all voices. Let's say that together. Bow down. right here to worship him. Speak unto him. Speak well of him. Bless his name and give him all the glory. God, we call you holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Stay right there. Holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, he's a holy God. Lord God Almighty. He's God Almighty. Yes, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Lord God Let's Almighty. take it up. Let's take it up. Holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Oh, 
the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, yes the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. Come on, help us say that. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God. The Lord our God. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. Say it one more time. Say it one more time all together. For the Lord. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Come on, come on, let's give him some praise. Come on, let's lift him up. The Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God. And anybody shout wonderful. Come on, let's give him some give him some praise in this place. Amen. We thank God certainly for our praise team. Amen. Leading us to lift up the name of the Lord in song. And uh, we're grateful that we have a voice that we can lift up his name. Amen. Amen. Some of our men are in Washington, D.C. at a men's conference. And, uh, and it's good to see all of your smiling faces today. If you don't mind, right where you are, just turn to somebody, wave at them if you don't mind. I know, I know it's hard sometimes to 
be kind and courteous. I know, I know it's a challenge, amen. But it's, come on, turn somebody else. You don't, you don't wave that three, wave at three more. Tell them it's going to be all right in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Anybody grateful today? Come on. Amen. 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 That's, that's, you got to, that's how you worship. Amen. It's uh, praises unto him. And uh, I'm so grateful for our music department and the direction they're headed and uh, Grateful for Sister Elette, Elette Ricks Chambers. Amen. She, she stepped in to help us out, and uh, we'll be announcing next Sunday that uh, we have found the person. And uh, amen. So, amen. <laughs> That hopefully is going to lead us uh, in our music department, music ministry uh, for at least the next 10 years while I'm here. Amen. <laughs> uh, and uh, if the Lord says the same, amen. Let's pray together. It's preaching time. Most gracious and eternal Father, how we love and thank you so much. Um, Lord, we thank you simply because you are God and God all by yourself. For you are mighty and awesome and wonderful. And even, oh God, if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough. Because even as we come to this worship hour, we recognize that you and you alone are worthy to be praised. Thank you, O oh God, for our praise team helping us to lift up your name in song. And thank you for those who are serving around the sanctuary even on this day. But now, Lord, it's preaching time. And in particular, O oh God, we pray that you stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice. Touch, O oh God, these lips of clay that I may be able again to edify your people according to the power that works in me. And, O oh God, we pray that you speak to the stillness of our hearts that we might know we've heard from on high. Hide me behind the cross, O oh God, that they may see none of me but all of thee. And we'll be so careful to give you all praise, all glory, and certainly all honor which is already yours. In the wonderful name of Christ Jesus, we do pray. And together, every child of God shouted amen. 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 Listen, if you got your Bible, stand with me if you're able. We're going to read one verse today. Uh, those of you who've been following along with us know that we are in a series out of the book of Philippians entitled Reclaiming Your Joy. And uh, we know and shared a couple of uh, sermons already out of uh, this book. And today we're just going to drop in on verse 20 and uh, see what the Lord has to say to us. You have your Bible? You have it? Say amen. amen. You can't find it. Sunday school, 9.30, amen. 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Right. Amen. Verse 20, first chapter. Here's what the Apostle Paul says after he says, yes, I will rejoice. And uh, talked about what he's going through will turn out for his deliverance. He says... As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be, a, not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. I just want to tag this text, talk about for a timely tidbit, faith in focus, faith in focus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord faith in focus. My brothers and sisters, a man was taken to a baseball game for the first time, and at the end of the game, he asked what he thought of the baseball game, and the man answered that he had never seen before such 
first-class dedication to a secondary cause. And listen, beloved, many who claim the Christian faith could be described as having a first-class dedication to secondary causes. As long as it is a, a, along the lines of what one philosopher calls bankrupt enthusiasm. The problem is not a lack of enthusiasm in the church, but maybe perhaps enthusiasm for the wrong things. We, we're full of enthusiasm for our favorite sports team, uh, favorite sport. Uh, you know, I shout out my Lakers. I, Shout out my Cowboys. It's, I got some mad love for those teams. And the truth of the matter is, beloved, I've come to discover that we can have a whole lot of enthusiasm for different things, such as hobbies and opportunities and even events. But in the case, in many cases, we are giving first class dedication to secondary events. Am I talking to anybody today? Listen, he, he, here we see Paul was not a man that gave first-class dedication to secondary causes. He was a man that gave first-class dedication to a first-class cause, and that cause was Jesus Christ. Paul was a man of faith, and that faith, beloved, was a focused faith. The concentration of his life was on the celestial, and the dedication of his life was on the eternal. He had fixed his heart on things above. And the truth of the matter is, beloved, the object for which he, be, he, he, he came to live for uh, and looked for was that of Jesus Christ. He lived for God. He lived for the Lord. And he anxiously anticipated his coming return. The truth of the matter is, beloved, Paul spoke in this text of eager expectation and his hope uh, in our in in our verse today, and the words were used in the secular writing of a watchman who, keep, who keeps looking into the darkness for the first gleam of a distant beacon. The word eager expectation comes from, if you would, a compound of three words which speaks of looking away uh, from what might be right at hand and totally concentrating on another object, something that is right in front of you, something that is there that you can see, that you can put your hands on. And the ideal of eager expectation is the fact that you turn away from right what is right there in front of you and look for something, looking at something else, concentrating, if you would, on something else. Paul was saying that this is the focus of my life. And the truth of the matter is, beloved, Paul is describing those things that were important to him as a Christian. And I believe that as we look at this text, this verse today, we ought to find some things that are important to us as well. What, what were these things Paul had focused upon? What were these things that Paul concentrated on? What were these, uh, these models that, that Paul looked to, if you would, for his life? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because the truth is this, notice in the text, what we see Paul focused his mind on when he wrote this verse was number one, he did not want Christ to be dishonored. It's in the text. I don't want you to think I'm making this up. Paul, desire was, uh, he says, hope that I will not be at all ashamed. You see that in your Bible? That, that statement literally means that, that I shall not be a disgrace or put to shame in anything. A great fear of Paul's life, beloved, was that he would do something that would bring dishonor on the name of Jesus Christ. It, it focused first on his ministry. In other words, Paul was well aware of the potential and possibility of failure in his life. He, he knew that he was not above committing sin, uh, not above certain sins. It, it was ever on his mind that he was a mere, he was a man 
man, but he was a mere man. And there was always, and there was always potential for failure that would bring shame, that could bring shame and disgrace to the cause of Christ. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 26 and 27, he says, I therefore run, so run, not as uncertainty. He says, so I fight, uh, fight I not as one who beats the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that it by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself would not be a castaway. The truth is, beloved, that word castaway means worthless, unapproved, or rejected. It's the picture of an athlete that is unapproved or, or disqualified for an athletic event. Paul did not want to be disqualified. He knew that the body would be a wonderful servant but a terrible master. I wish somebody would say amen because the truth of the matter is all of us understand that the flesh is, uh, the spirit is willing but the flesh can be weak. Are you listening to me? And Paul says, I, I don't want to be a castaway. I don't want to be uh, unapproved. I don't, I don't want to be disqualified. And therefore, he says, I kept kept my body uh, uh, under subjection. That word subjection there in that verse literally means to be a slave master. It's the idea a slave driver. It, it means to subdue. It means to enslave. In other words, Paul says like this. He says he controlled his desires instead of letting his desires control him. He controlled by the power of the Spirit of God, his flesh, instead of allowing the flesh to control him. Stay with me if you would, because listen, when Abraham Lincoln was a candidate for presidency, someone asked him what he thought about the prospects. He, he said with uh, characteristic humor, he answered, I do not fear John Breckinridge, for he is of the South, and the North will not support him. And it says, and uh, I do, no, my, do not, not much fear Stephen Douglas, for the South is against him. But there is a man named Lincoln I see in the papers of whom I am very much afraid. And if I am defeated, it will be by that man. Hear me, beloved, hear me good, because many believers are defeated by their own self. Come on, somebody help me. By our own fleshly desires, carnal and messed up appetites. I wish somebody would help me. Instead of being victorious over these things, we become victims of these things. And the truth is, there, it is these uncontrolled, unbridled appetites that pull us away, pull us in, and and pull us down. Here it is. It's not just the enemy. It is the enemy in me. And I dare that we not look to the right nor to the left. Hello, somebody. We're looking at the man in the mirror. Are you hearing me? Paul's focus was on, on ministry, but at the core, it was about his master. Hear me, beloved. Paul did not want his ministry to dishonor his master. The story of King David's great sin is a familiar story. It marred his life and marked his name. But even worse, it, it, it worse was that it, it brought dishonor to God. We read in 2 Samuel chapter chapter 11, verse 27, where uh, it says, but the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. In other words, David's sin displeased the Lord. We also read when the prophet Nathan confronted David with the sin, he declared in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14, how be it because this deed you have given great occasion to the enemy of the Lord, to, uh, of the enemy of the Lord to blaspheme. His sin not only did displeased the Lord, but it dishonored the Lord. That, that, that was uh, Paul's constant fear and dread that he would bring ruin to his ministry and reproach to his master. He knew that sin would bring shame on his life and on his Lord. And listen, beloved, our pursuits ought to be that of Psalms 119 verse 11, where it says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I may 
not sin against thee. Our prayer ought to be that of Psalms 119, verse 37. Lord, I turn my eyes from looking at worthless things, and I give my life to your ways. Our purpose ought to be that of Psalms 119, verse 80, that says, May my heart be blameless in your statues, that I may not be put to shame. In other words, beloved, our faith, our focus should be that we are careful in all things. I wish somebody would help me, that we don't give the enemy one inch, because if we give the enemy one inch, somebody knows he'll take a mile. We, we got to be careful how we walk, and we got to be careful how we talk. We got to be careful where we go and what we do as believers, because we don't want our life, help me hear somebody, to dishonor Christ. And let me just give somebody some good news today. If we have ever lived a life that dishonored God, today is a good day to get it right with him. Is that all right? And listen, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody help me. All of us in here have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so it's a good time to get it right. So his focus was that he did not want Christ to be dishonored. Second focus is that he did not, he, 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 that Christ would be declared. He wanted, he wanted not to dishonor Christ with his life, but he also wanted Christ to be declared. That's my second point. I'm moving kind of fast today, so y'all better get with me. I'll be through in a few minutes. Listen here. The truth is, Christ, he, did, he wanted Christ to be declared. That's, that's the second point. He expressed the focus of his life that Christ would be declared, that, that he says in the text, that with full courage. I hope y'all see that in that verse. The word courage refers to the freedom of speech with an unfailing boldness that I may be able with my life to speak freely and boldly on the, on the name of Jesus Christ. And Paul is talking about being a witness for Christ and, hear me beloved, he wanted to preach Christ everywhere he could, even in his chains, even locked up in prison. We saw last week he still proclaimed the good news of the gospel that even Caesar's household heard of it. And so, beloved, he didn't want uh, the, a city or a country not to hear that Christ the, had, had risen, was the risen Lord, and that he died on that cross for their sins. Paul had, if you would, a 2020 vision for the world. One theologian said it like this about preaching. He said it's not the, a human address, but it, it is a divine pronouncement. Another set of preaching, we are not appointed to give good advice but to proclaim the good news. I wish somebody would help me. The good news that Christ came, the good news that he unraveled himself of his royal regalia put on the trappings of humanity came to planet earth trampled here for 30 and 3 years only to be hung on an old rugged cross. But somebody used to say back in the day he didn't stay dead. Come on, somebody help me. They say he died on an old rugged cross, but hallelujah. Come on, help me preach this. Hallelujah. He didn't stay dead. It was bright early Sunday morning that he got up with all power in his hand. Y'all heard that before? Truth of the matter is, beloved, that, that's what preaching is. Preaching is, is, is not just, uh, uh, we're not just giving good advice, but we are to proclaim that good news. Burning in Paul's heart was this divine pronouncement, and he had to proclaim it everywhere he could. Someone had written this poem. It says, preach by your lives and preach from the word. Preach by your sayings that souls may be stirred. Preach on a trolley or preach on a bus. Preach without fanfare and preach without fuss. Preach in a hall or preach in a, in a shack. Preach the word and never turn 
turned back. Preach on the sidewalk, preach the good news, preach the gospel and not men's views. Preach with the, the unction of the Holy Spirit in parts. Preach to touch lives and melt cold hearts. Preach only Christ, the Savior of men. Tell how he died and liveth again. Preach the pure gospel so true and so tried. Preach casting all doubt and false doctrine aside. Preach every moment till life run, race is run. Preach till heaven, till in heaven you hear well done. We got to tell somebody about how good God has been to us. We got to proclaim. We got to be heralds and tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. Is there anybody in here know that you got some good news to tell? Is there anybody in here recognize that you know that there is a God? I wish somebody would help me. That I help pick you up and turn you around. Place your feet on solid ground. Is there anybody in the place today that know you got some good news and if that's the case, you better tell it everywhere you go. Paul wanted to constantly preach Christ and he wanted to do it courageously. Everybody shout courageously. He wanted to preach Christ everywhere to everyone. He wanted every place to hear the story and every person to meet the Savior. He wanted to be a bold witness for Christ. Y'all remember the little old lady in the Wendy's commercial when she said, where's the beef? That was Clara Pe Peller. She was hired first as a manicurist, but when she met the producer, uh, she looked at the producer and said, how you doing, honey? And, uh, and so uh, right then, that producer realized that he had found a natural. And so the producer convinced Wendy's to design an ad campaign around her, and almost immediately, Wendy's sales jumped 15 percent. The 82-year-old Peller became an instant star with a national fan club. She ended up making $500,000 for that Wendy's ad plus merchandise. And before she passed away in 1987, she said this, I made some money, which is nice for an older person. Somebody say amen. But Wendy's made millions because of me. Come here real quick. Listen, beloved, the question I asked you is whether or not anyone spiritually has benefited from your life. Wendy's may have made millions because of Clara Pe Peller, but, but will heaven gain any souls because of you? Someone said that a Christian must keep the faith, but not to himself. I like that. In other words, we got to tell somebody. And uh, let me ask you another question. Do all people need to be saved? The answer is yes, yes, and emphatically yes. That's why we've got to, we want to be a bold and courageous witness. We want to be courageous in our faith. It is evangelism at the core because here it is, evangelism is the sob of God. It is the extinct, uh, 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 extinguished cry of Jesus as he wept over the doomed city of Jerusalem. It is the cry of the apostle Paul where he said for my people, my Jewish brother and sisters, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. It, 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 evangelism is the heart winning plea of Moses when he said, oh, this people have sinned, yet now God, if you will, forgive their sins, and if not, blot me out, I pray thee, out of the book which thou has written. It is the cry of John Knox when he said, give me Scotland, 
or I die. It is the declaration of John Wesley when he said, the world is my parish. It is the sob of every parent in the night, midnight hour weeping over a prodigal child. It is the sob of a teacher that knows that the life's answer is not found in a textbook, but it is found in the good book. I wish somebody would help me. We, we got we to gotta tell somebody. We, we got to recognize that, that it is the unction that we've got to get out, and that has to be the focus of our faith, that we've got to tell somebody how good God has been to you. Can I just ask you this real quick? Has God been good to you? Come on, don't fool me now. Has God been good to you? I know, I know you're looking at me awfully strange right now because you don't understand how good God has been to you. Because if, if you knew how good God would have been to you, you'd get up and run around this place. Listen, the truth of the matter is God has been so good to us that, that not only did he wake us up this morning, but he has woken us up every single day of our life. And although I may not have everything I want, God has taken taken care of all of my needs. Listen, God has been good to us. As a matter of fact, just witness to the person sitting next to you. Just hunch them real quick. Let them know how good God has been to you. Just tell them my God is a good God. He's an awesome God. He's kept me. He holds me. He is keeping me in the midnight hour. And if you got good news, why keep it to yourself? Come on, just tap somebody and say, why keep that to yourself? Why keep, why keep, why keep it? Why keep it to yourself? Why keep it to yourself? Are you listening to me? If you want to focus faith, then we got to declare Christ constantly and courageously. We got to be bold for the Lord. For God so loved the world, not just a few, the wise and great, the noble and the true, are those of favorite class or rank or hue, God loved the world. Do you? We got to tell it. Paul says, the focus of my life, he says, I don't want Christ to be dishonored. I would that Christ would be declared. But lastly, he says, my focus, lastly, is that Christ would be on display. He said, now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. That's what your text says. Paul not only wanted to serve Christ by a clean life, not only did he want to share Christ by a courageous life, but he also wanted to show Christ by a conformed life. The word honor literally means to make large. It is used figurative, in a figurative sense to exalt, to glorify, to magnify. And listen, beloved, Psalms 34 verse 3 say, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, somebody help me. And let us exalt his name. Psalm 69 verse 30 says, I will praise the name of the Lord with song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Mary said in Luke chapter 1 verse 46, my soul will magnify the Lord. And that's what Paul wanted to do. He wanted to magnify Christ. He wanted Christ to blow up. You do know what blow up mean, don't you? That's the urban vernacular meaning to become famous, successful, and respected usually within a small amount of time. He wanted Christ to blow up. He wanted 
Christ to be magnified. That was Paul's prayer that he would be blot that that he yelled out, "I want Christ to be honored, praised, and glorified in my life." He didn't want to be admired. He wanted Christ to be adored. He didn't want people complimenting him. He wanted people captivated by Christ. Are you listening to me? He didn't want to be the center of attention because he knew that Christ could only be at the center. Are you hearing me? It's all sort of like, beloved, uh, years ago, J.H. Uh, Jowett, early, early one morning during the great uh, Northfield meetings that uh, D.L. Moody used to have each summer, preached to men from a mission. These men from this mission were down and out men, down and outers. They were off the streets of New York. And before Jowett preached, one of the men prayed for him. He prayed, oh Lord, we pray for our brother. Now blot him out, reveal thy glory in such a, such a blazing splendor that he shall be forgotten. I like that, beloved, because hear me, that's the ideal that Paul is saying. Paul is saying, not my will, but thy will be done. He's simply saying, Lord, hide me behind the cross that they may see none of me but all of thee. He says, don't let it be my acumen and my intelligence. Don't allow it to be my oratory words and the way I present things. He says, I want Christ above everything else to be magnified in my name. Every word, I want you to use it for your glory. Every, every sentence, I want you to magnify, to be magnified uh, uh, in the world. And listen, Paul wanted his life to be put, to put the Lord Jesus Christ on display. Nothing else. He did not want attention for himself. He did not get a Facebook page. I wish somebody would help me and post stuff about what's going on. In your, no, he didn't do that. He didn't get, in, get on Instagram and he didn't hop on Twitter. I wish somebody would help me. No, Paul wanted everything to point to Christ. I wish somebody would help me. And some of y'all need to tell some of these preachers, you trying to magnify yourself instead of magnifying the Lord. You trying to uplift your ministry instead of uplifting the master. And whenever, whatever we do online or wherever, our goal ought to be that Christ is magnified. We want to blow him up. We want to blow up Christ. We want folk not to see me, but we want them to see all of thee. We want to see them to see Christ, the one who died on Calvary. Christ, the one who came and, and uh, hung, bled, and died. The one who came all the way from heaven's glory. We want to point them to Jesus Christ. Paul wanted, beloved, that uh, one, like one writer put it, he said, I want my, my body shall be the theater in which the glory of Christ shall be exalted. In other words, beloved, Paul is talking about Christ being exhibited and revealed through his own life. Hear me, beloved. Paul wanted his body to be a showcase for the Savior, a platform for the prophet, priest, and king. He wanted his life to be a stage for the great shepherd and the rose of Sharon. He wanted to, he considered himself an earthly frame for a heavenly picture. Are you listening to me? And the cold part about Paul's statement is that he wanted Christ to blow up and it mattered whether or not it was in his life or his death. He, he's locked up in prison soon to be uh, executed for loving Christ and he says I, I want I want to blow up Christ even if I'm alive and I want to blow up Christ if this thing leads me to death. If this thing leads me to death I want to keep my head up and I want to keep on serving Christ in spite of what the enemy might do to me and that is a testimony for everybody in this room in spite of everything that you got to go through you want that whatever that experience is to blow up Christ are you listening to me you want folk to recognize that whatever it is that you're going through it was God that kept you whether it's in life or death whether you're making it or won't make it you want Christ to be magnified you want his name to be lifted on a high instead of how good it 
it is. That's why you got to stop looking so down all the time. That's why you got to stop frowning and looking like you've been sucking on lemon juice. And come on, somebody help me. And sucking on persimmons because in spite of everything that you're going through, you recognize that whatever it is, Christ can be magnified. Is that anybody's testimony today? You've gone through some sorrows. You've gone through some difficult days. You've lost people you love, but folk were looking at you and they saw how good not you were or how strong you were. They saw the God that was in you. They saw you praising God. They saw you giving God glory. They saw you telling God, thank you in spite of all that you've been through. You put Christ on display. Are you listening to me? And those of us know that that magnification can come in two ways. First, it can come by telescope. That is that that which is afar away, it brings near and visible. Can I say that again? That which is far away, the telescope, we're going to magnify Christ. That which is far away brings it near to someone else. Y'all get the picture? That, that, that those that don't know the Lord and may be far away from him, our lives can be used. Ooh, help me hear somebody. <laughs> to bring Christ close to somebody else. But also a microscope. That which is invisible is made visible. Is that all? Can I help you real quick? Folk may not be able to see Christ, but by us. May be invisible to them, but when we serve and praise God, when we magnify him, they're able to see Christ through us. We are not the Christ, but we are used by the Christ. Is there anybody in here want to be used by God? That's, that's what Paul wanted. Paul wanted the Christ who is seated in heaven to be seen on earth. He wanted Christ to be visible and vocal through his life. He wanted Christ to be realized and actualized through his, th through his living and even through his death. And listen, beloved, we too ought to want our lives to be like magnifying glasses for the Lord Jesus Christ so others can see the characteristics of Christ. Listen, there was a statue of Christ that was damaged in a bombing. The hands were broken off, and they first intended to repair the statue by replacing the hands. And someone said, no, let's not replace the hands. Let's put an inscription on the statue and says, he has no hands but mine. Are you listening to that? He has no hands but our hands. In other words, and listen, beloved, if this world is going to see Christ, they will see him through our lives. He will be revealed through our bodies. Our hands must be his hands. Our eyes must be his eyes. Our mouth must be his mouth. And our feet must be his feet. That's why the songwriter said it like this, how to reach the masses, men of every bird. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Second verse goes, all oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for the them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the words that he said. I'll draw all men unto me. Listen, I like this third verse that says, do not exalt the preacher. Do, don't exalt the pew. Preach the gospel simple, full, and free. Prove him and you will find that promise is true, that I'll draw all men unto me. Can I say lift him up? Yeah. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal Father, we pray that our life is in proper focus. We pray, O oh God, that we would live a life that would not dishonor you. And if 
we've done anything that has dishonored you, Lord, we pray your forgiveness even right now. And you're able to throw our sins, cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. Give us the strength from this day forward to live for you. Then, Lord, we want to declare you everywhere to everyone. We want our, the focus of our life to be a living testimony to who you are. So not only do we want to declare you, we want our lives to display you. We want to... We want to blow you up, not St. Paul, not the preacher, not, not the deacons or trustee. We want to blow you up so that this world may see none of us, but through our hands, through our eyes, through our feet, through our mouths, they may hear and declare that you are a good God. Lord, we thank you today. Help us to focus. Help us to focus our faith on you. For you said in your word that we need to look to the hills from which cometh our help because our real help comes not from the hill, but from the hill maker. So thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Together, every child of God said amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand right where you are. I'm done today. Truth of the matter is, beloved, you may be here today and maybe you're at a place and a point in your life where you're looking for focus. You, you got to zero in on something. And the Apostle Paul gives us a great idea of what we can focus our life on, many other things, but we can focus our life on Christ. That's, that's the bottom line. Because Christ is the one that can help us through all of life's challenges and difficulties. So what I want to do is, if you never said yes to the Lord, I want to extend the invitation to you right now. I want to, you may be in this place and you've never invited Christ into your heart. Uh, I invite you today to walk down that aisle and give your hand to these prayer room counselors and give your heart to God. But also, if you're here and you never say, and you're saved, but you don't have a church home, today your search can end. You may find a church just as good as St. Paul, but glory be to God, you ain't going to find one any better. Somebody say amen. So will you come? Is there one? As the choir sings, is there one to say yes to the Lord? Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Saints are praying. Oh, my sister, give. Is there one to say yes? Come on. Come on to Christ. We're going to sing that one more time. We offer Christ to you. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Play softly. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Our new membership department is going to come right here. Uh, we want to 
give out the, what we used to say in days gone by, the right hand of fellowship to our new members. Good morning. Good morning, St. Paul family and friends and visitors. We're going to call out some names of those individuals that have completed the um, classes to become members of the St. Paul family. So church, we definitely want to let you know that we are growing. And so we give God the glory, we give God all the credit, and we thank our pastor for leading us in the direction that we are going. So as we begin, first of all, I do apologize. My name is Willie Raxter, and this is our very own uh, sister Sandy Harris. Um, we are part of the new membership department. Well, actually, I want to say we are part of Starting Point, formerly known as the new membership department. And um, our facilitators are Sister Wilma Whitfield and Brother Jerry Springer. They are the leaders in our ministry. So please keep us in prayer as we continue to grow. So first name we're going to have is Sharon Brooks. Sharon Brooks. I want to say Sharon Brooks. And if uh, Sister Brooks is not here, if there's a family member, if you can, come up and, and grab the certificate for them. Next, we have Joanne Cleary. Is Joanne here? We have Shanika Harvey. We got a lot of folks watching online today, huh? Um, <laughs> Christine Kelly. Canova. Matthews, Savion Murray. I saw you got to come for that. Yes! That's one of our new choir members, y'all. Shakibra Rogers. Carlos Steele. Denise Williams, Glory Williams, and Roland Williams. So thank you all very much. Can we give some of our new members a big hand? And I believe Pastor's going to come and... And I'm going, I'm going to keep my mask on. I've, I've been a little under the weather, and uh, I don't want to spread nothing to no, no one. And so I'm, going, I'm not going to right hand of fellowship you. I'm going to right fist bump fellowship you. All right. Welcome to the fellowship. Welcome to the fellowship. Welcome to the fellowship. Welcome to the fellowship. Come on, church. Let's give God praise. Come on. Come on. Thank God. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all good? Y'all want to say anything? No? I didn't think so. Amen. <laughs> you may take your seat, and let's give God some praise today. You have the reminders. Those, those reminders. All right, church, we're done for the day. I want to remind you uh, to give on your way out the door, and um, if you, this is your first time visiting us, w welcome to the, to the St. Paul family, and uh, we hope you enjoyed your, uh, the service on this day. I hope you were blessed and received something from God. Amen. And um, so I want to encourage you to continue to give. Uh, we're going to give on our way out the door, or there will be. Uh, there's a QR code that's up there. You can give that way or you can drop it in the basket on the way out. 
Uh, one thing we do know is that we cannot outgive God. Somebody say amen. And then a reminder that the church office will be closed November 21st through the 25th for Thanksgiving. Uh, there still will be COVID testing uh, on the campus on Friday, November, November 25th as well. A to the man. Just want to also remind you, if we could, continue to lift up our pastor emeritus in prayer. And those of you who've been praying for my mother, uh, thank you for your prayers and your cards. I give her all those cards. They had to rush her to the hospital uh, last night. Um, it, she has vertigo as well, and so it, it caused some challenges with her. And uh, so they had to rush her to the hospital, but she's back at the, um, at the care facility, and she's doing better. I'm headed over there to see her. So thank you for your prayers. Amen. Our God is a good God. Amen. And uh, see, oh, I thought you all were gone. Stand up real quick. Both of you. Listen, last Saturday, I'm, Lord, my, I'm, no, I'm trying to remember the, I, I got a whole spiel I had in my head. Uh, what's, Figueroa, that's right. That's right, Lord. Uh, Y'all saw uh, the color purple when Seely, Seely said, I was married. No, was that Seely? I was married now. Our own Savannah Sierra and brother David Figueroa are now married. Come on, let's give God some praise. God is still bringing them together. I thought y'all was on the honeymoon. And, uh, no, y'all good. Okay, okay, all right. I'm, she said, not just yet. So y'all congratulate them. Show them some love. And listen, I'm going to see my mama after service, but if any of y'all got your boo right here, I can take you in the back and we can marry you right now. <laughs> he said, don't look at me. Okay. Let's stand. Come on, Perseus, let's close us out. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Dear God, we are thankful for this timely message. Lord, we know that you're calling all of us to proclaim you, to lift you up, and not bring dishonor to your name. So, Lord, be with us as we go out in our various pathways this week, that this message will be on our heart. Now unto the God who is able to keep us from falling and to present us fallers before the throne with exceeding joy, to the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And we all say amen. 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 St. Paul family, thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for final announcements. We need your help collecting donations for the Thanksgiving food box giveaway. Visit stpaulsack.org forward slash give. Text give to 916-579-7280. Attention 2022 Thanksgiving food giveaway. Sponsor a box. We are seeking two boxes of stuffing, one can of cranberry sauce, two gravy packages, three boxes of mac and cheese, two cans of green beans, two boxes of cornbread or rolls, and fresh yams or three cans of yams. Completed boxes can be dropped off at the church November 15th or November 16th between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Update your member information needed by all members. To update your information, send a text message for a link to 833-447-0099 with the message update. Type the word update and send. Click the link received to fill out the form. Or you can fill the form out online at www.stpaulsac.org forward slash update. St. Paul family, here's the November happenings at St. Paul. This Tuesday, November 15th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., collecting Thanksgiving food donations. This Wednesday, the 16th of November, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., collecting Thanksgiving food donations. And at 12 p.m., Word on Wednesday, Bible study, in person and online. This Thursday, November 17th, 
17th, 6 p.m., Oak Park Peace Walk, we will be meeting at the FLC. This Friday, November 18th, at 9 a.m., will be COVID-19 testing. 10 a.m., COVID-19 vaccines. Also at 10 a.m., community food box giveaway. There is no RSVP required. This Saturday, November 19th, will be the Thanksgiving food box giveaway. RSVP required. Sundays, Sunday school at 9 a.m. for children, youth, and adults. Sunday worship service at 10 a.m. in person and online. Also happening in November, November 24th, Thanksgiving service at 10 a.m. The 21st through the 25th, the church office will be closed. November 29th, free Zumba class in the FLC. For more information, visit the attend section of our website at www.stpaulsac.org. St. Paul's Victory Magazine, Harvest Edition, is now available for viewing. Visit our website at www.stpaulsac.org. And don't forget to stay connected. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up and share this message to encourage someone this week. St. Paul family, that does it for your morning news. Thank you for worshiping with us.